Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix. On this video, we are reviewing the Steinberg UR824 audio interface. We received a lot of requests from you guys when we did our unboxing video, so there we are. It's a 24 in and out audio interface. It has eight mic preamps, and these are the D pre preamps from Yamaha, so you will find those preamps in some high end consoles from Yamaha. Every preamp has um, a pad switch, you also have a 48 volt phantom power for your channels and also high Z inputs in the front. Of course you have a signal indicator here so if you peak you will know with a red LED light. We also have two headphone outputs completely separate from each other and your hardware output level for your monitors. At the back we have our remaining analog inputs as well as our analog outputs but we also have two sets of ADAT in and out, so lots of connectivity right there. And in the end, we also have our BNC connectors for our clock. The UR824 can record up to 192 kilohertz of sampling rate. And of course, it's compatible with any DAW on the market. The thing that we really like is that it has onboard DSP effects, so you can monitor using these effects with no latency. And at the same time, you can also use it as standalone using an iPad app to control all the inputs and outputs of the interface. So now we are inside Cubase, and uh, if you're using Cubase, you'll get the most out of this interface. Why? Basically because the software and the hardware are very tightly integrated. So if I go to my mixer right here, you can see that I have my hardware options right here, which is because Cubase detects the UR824 and it knows all the hardware settings of the interface. So they speak very well with each other. For example, I can go here and see if my phantom power is on and off. I can also turn on my filter. So now I've activated my high pass filter. I also have my, I can invert my phase. So here it is, now it's inverted, now it's back. And as you can see, we have quite a few things right here which are very interesting. So let's go and try them out. So this section includes all the DSP effects that come with the UR824. What does DSP mean? This means that we have latency-free monitoring through those effects and we're not taxing our CPU while we're doing that. It's all coming from the UR824, the built-in DSP. First, I'm going to try the channel strip. I can just click right there. Let's bring it up. There it is. So now, as you can see, this is uh, basically a channel strip. We have a compressor. We also have an EQ. Uh, it, it has all the parameters that you might want to tweak to get to the sound that you want. But the great thing is, if you have no idea on how to tweak a compressor or how to tweak an EQ, or even if you don't have time to do this, you have this morph um, knob right here which basically allows you to morph between the different settings as you can see now I'm a bit more I have a bit more mid-range then it morphs into something a little bit more like uh, radio voice uh, let's go a little bit uh, higher and you can see now it shifts to something else and then it becomes very bright towards the end so I mean all these settings are pretty usable for different program material I think that maybe I'm gonna keep this a little bit. Now if I know what I'm doing, I want to further tweak this, I can go into my compressor for example, add a little bit more compression and now you can see I have an even more pronounced kind of um, you know radio voice. Uh, I really like that. I'm gonna keep it, maybe pull back the compressor a little bit. You also have your attack, your release, uh, you can uh, make it into a hard compressor, you know, a hard knee. This is very good. Um, so Let's say that we've dialed all this. This is all DSP again, so it all runs uh, through the UR824. Uh, we also have the reverb. Most singers, when they're tracking, they like to have a kind of a comfort reverb, as we call it. And as you can see, I can just bring it up, and then I can start dialing in. Let's see. And as you can hear, that I have a lot of reverb. These are also some. I'm gonna dial it back. Uh, these are also some very, very nice algorithms from some iconic Yamaha uh, reverb units, uh, and uh, they're really customizable. So I can make this room longer, up to 30 seconds, or short. I can have a pre-delay, decay, uh, my room size. I can make it very short, very small, or large, 
it can change the diffusion as you can see um, and this is all real time as you can see I, I don't have any latency problems I also have low pass filters and of course this is a whole algorithm but of course if I click right here I can also change this into a room uh, or a plate and every different algorithm has uh, of course different uh, parameters so if I just press the E button right here now I get the room section of the reverb and I can add a little bit more let's emphasize it a little bit okay so as you can see very very high quality algorithms and this is just for monitoring so you're not going to print this into your track which is great so now let's try and record some guitar as you can see I've connected my guitar straight into the high Z input I've also activated my high Z um, switch right there and this is how it sounds and of course the great thing is now I can add my filters straight away and I can also start adding my monitoring effects so for example right now I have a channel strip right there let's see what we can do Let's try and so you can see that the compression is working really hard right now. Maybe I can open uh, the attack a little bit so I can let a little bit more attack go through. Maybe I can add a little bit more um, top end. Let's try this and maybe I can just bring it so I can get some of the mids as well. So I get a more consistent sound. So basically I can monitor through that or I can even record it. Let's see with and without. So I can get lots of attack. This compressor is really, really good. Of course, I can even add some reverb. Let's try and uh, activate my reverb. Uh, add a little bit of it. So here we are at the room algorithm, which I feel works good for guitars. Let's add some pre-delay. a little bit too much maybe a bit less and I can change the pretty late time as well and of course the other thing that we have when it comes to recording guitars is we can also use some virtual amps. So let's try and switch into clean amp sound. There we go. And let's see how it sounds. And of course you can have some distortion now. Or maybe some vibrato. So you can get some pretty, pretty usable sounds. Again, I can record dry without this um, amp effect or I can record the amp straight into my audio file. So let's try some other amps. Let's see. Okay, that's how it looks like.
All right, so now let's try the drive algorithm. As you can see, this has several amp types. Let's try this one. And it sounds like it's pretty dynamic, so. It sounds like it's pretty high gain, so like maybe I can change my reverb algorithm to a hole and see how it sounds like this. Oh, nice and long. Um, let me see. So now we've connected our bass into the high Z input in the front, and that's how it sounds uh, dry. And of course, maybe I want to get rid of the high pass filter. In this case, I'm just going to deactivate it. And of course, if I want to monitor through uh, a compressor and an EQ so that I can get a feeling of a more mixed and polished sound, I can go here, activate it, and um, now I have my compressor and my EQ. Let's try and compress the bass a little bit. Let's try this now. So it's a more even sound now compared to this. With. And of course now I can even uh, add a little bit of low end for example, maybe a little bit of mids so I can maybe get rid of the highs, very the very top end. And maybe I can just remove some frequencies. Let's see how it sounds before. I'm compressing too much. Maybe I can dial it back a little bit. And you know, you can just dial in your sound, save it as a preset, and you know, just use it later on when you're recording uh, bass again and you have your own library of presets. So now let's talk about the iPad functionality of the UR824 and that's a great feature, we love that feature because that means that you can use the interface as a standalone basically mixer. So what we've done here now is we have one single USB cable that goes straight into the iPad right here and we're using the DSP Mix Effects. it's a free app that you can download from the App Store and what you can do is you can actually take control of the interface without using a computer which is great so for example I can activate my um, f filters right here, I can use my uh, phase reversal I can also activate my channel strip, open it and as you can see I have the same exact controls, it's just the only difference is I'm doing it through the iPad now. So I can add my compressor and it's super big, I can see what I'm doing very very clearly. Um, I can also of course add my reverbs, for example, I can add my reverb like this. I can also change the reverb algorithms, I have my hole, my room, my plate right there. I can open the interface for my reverb and change the time. I can change my pretty lay. Let's let's have a little bit more reverb so you can hear how it sounds. One more, uh, yeah, t yeah. Very very smooth reverbs, by the way. So very long reverbs, almost like a, you know an infinite reverb. Pretty lay. My room size very nicely displayed right here. I can also zoom in and out of the waveform. Uh, diffusion. My high pass filtering. My low pass filtering. Uh, my ratio for all my different bands of the reverb so I can make the reverb really thin or really big depending on how I want it. I also have my presets right here and of course let me 
turn it off now. <laughs> I can change my panning like this. I can change the level of every channel. I can see my phantom uh, power if it's on or off. I can create different sub mixes for my headphones. And we also have a very nice meter bridge right there. So if you are uh, like on stage and you want to record your band or if you want to just monitor through this, you can see very clearly all your levels. So that's a very, very cool thing. And of course, we have uh, very uh, comprehensive settings here. So we have our uh, sampling rate, our high pass filtering. I can change the, uh, you know, the bas basically the cutoff frequency, uh, 40 hertz, 60 hertz, and so on and so forth. Loop back, which basically allows you to record everything that comes out of the interface, even your audio from com your computer, and uh, basically record it straight into Cubase or whatever application that you have. That's a great thing if you're doing lots of uh, tutorial videos or YouTube videos because it allows you to record the output of the entire audio signal path and your operations for your uh, knob operations, your fader operations, all those things and uh, it's, uh, it's a very very cool thing, it gives you control over the interface wherever you are. Right, so right now I'm launching Cubase's LE, which is a free app that you can download from the App Store. But the great thing is that with the UR824, you can unlock this app completely so you can take full advantage of its features. It's basically a version of Cubase for the iPad and it allows you to record audio, MIDI, mix. It's a very, very cool app. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it Dr. Mix UR824 and uh, here we go now we have uh, an empty project right there you see it looks very much like Cubase so what I can do is I can add an audio track there we go and uh, I can also change my settings you can see that I have my audio inputs right there and I can just hit record and now it's basically recording my voice I can activate a click track there we go and stop it and as you can see it recorded my voice exactly like a normal desktop app would do. I can double click on it, I can see the waveform, you can see it right now, right here, uh, very nice and clear. I can also have all the basic functions, my trim, my reverse, my normalize, I can normalize the waveform for example, I can do fade-ins, I, um, I can also undo of course if I want to, so let's go and undo what I just did um, and uh, of course I can keep on adding tracks so that's a great great app to use when you are recording a location if you want to record a band or if you want to record a concert it's a great thing and of course as I said you also have your inputs right there and your mixer so you can mix you can change your um, panning all those things and you can also add effects so for example you have your EQ right there you can change your EQ settings the great thing is that once you've done all this you can transfer your project into Cubase and the settings will translate so you can keep on working with the full app so there you go that's what you can do with uh, the UR24 as a standalone interface with the iPad so there you go guys, here's our review for the Steinberg UR824. Hope you enjoyed this and please do let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. If you want to see more reviews, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up and visit us at drmix.com. See you in the next one.